You Can't Always Say What You Want focuses on the history of several key free speech issues, political speech, obscenity, threats, official language, and compelled speech, in order to provide some background to the current threats to free speech in the United States, with references where applicable to freedom of expression in Britain and in the European Union, EU. Although liberal democracies like these have generally expanded speech rights over the years, that is no reason to be complacent. Some laws do broaden speech protections, but others continue to chip away at these hard-won freedoms. As we look at the laws that protect or limit speech, we'll consider as well how courts interpret statutes, particularly those laws that deal with language use. Originalism, a method popular in American legal circles today, seeks to determine what reasonable people understood the Constitution and the early laws of the United States to mean at the time they were enacted. But as we'll see, that original meaning may be difficult or impossible to recover, and so other legal scholars prefer to read a law both practically and flexibly, understanding the meaning of older laws in light of present conditions in order to achieve an outcome that promotes the common good. Although the scope of this book is broad, there are aspects of language law that I have not had room to address. These include defamation, a topic too varied and complex to be treated here, yet one with important connections to the freedom of speech and of the press. Case in point, former vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin sued the New York Times for defamation, claiming that the Times recklessly disregarded the truth when it printed a 2017 editorial mistakenly connecting her political rhetoric with a 2011 mass shooting in Arizona, even though the newspaper quickly corrected its error. But both the judge and the jury rejected her argument that the Times had acted with malice, finding instead that the newspaper had made an honest mistake which it quickly corrected. She failed to convince the courts to reverse the precedent set in the 1964 Supreme Court decision in New York Times v. Sullivan that public figures must prove in a defamation suit that damaging misinformation about them wasn't simply an honest mistake, but was instead the result of actual malice on the part of the writer. Other areas I do not address include blasphemy, not a current problem in the West, but one which remains an issue sometimes a life-or-death issue in many parts of the world, and commercial speech, including the laws of intellectual property and of trademark and copyright. I do not cover the expanding field of forensic linguistics either, with topics as varied as the linguistic structure of police and courtroom interrogation, the impact of the common mistranslation and mistranscription of witness testimony or patient interviews, document verification and author identification, and the identification or exoneration of suspects or defendants through linguistic analysis of their speech or writing.